Hi everyone, I'm Jason Barrows with jerryjamesstone.com with another baking recipe for you today. Since it's the holiday season, we're gonna do a festive scone recipe with cranberries and tangerine, which is a great combination. So let's get baking. So I've already started, um, I sifted all of the dry ingredients together, the flour, the baking soda, and the baking powder. I sifted those right into the uh, mixing bowl to make it really easy. So once that's in there, then I can put in the salt and the sugar. We're just gonna give that a turn or two. Next part is our butter. And we want this to be as cold as possible and we want this cut into about tablespoon size pieces. And we're gonna put that in the mixer. And we wanna mix that enough to that some of the butter gets incorporated, but we still have pieces sort of still discernible, like pea-sized pieces, because what that's going to do is it's actually going to tenderize the scone as it bakes in the oven. So we want that nice layer of flakiness. So that's what leaving some chunks of butter will do after we mix. So we're gonna put that in. Always start on the lowest speed when you put butter in with your dry ingredients, otherwise it'll kick out and you'll find your dry ingredients all over your table and all over yourself, so you definitely don't want that. So sometimes you can just pulse it just a couple of times to kind of get it started. So next we're going to add all of the rest of the ingredients in at once. So we have our buttermilk, our zest from our tangerine, and already plumped cranberries. So what I did for the cranberries is before I started, I took the cranberries, I filled a little bowl up with warm water for about 10 minutes. Just let those plump up so they're nice and, you know, just a little, have a little more body when they go into your scones. Just make sure that you strain them thoroughly and that they're not too wet when they go inside of your mix. And we want to mix this until it just comes together as a dough. So there might be a little bit of dry ingredients at the bottom. That's prefer to it being completely homogenous and you know you don't want to overwork the dough too much because then your scones will be a little tough and we definitely don't want that. All right so we've turned our dough out onto our floured work surface so now it's time to shape our dough we're going to shape it into an 18 by 5 inch log uh, and about inch and a half tall. So we're just going to stretch and pat the dough. There's no wrong way to do it. Just sort of, you know, stretch and pat and, you know, sometimes when you push down in one area, you might have to then narrow it further down. You do want to make sure that you're making corners so you don't want the ends to be rounded because that'll mean your end scones will not be triangular. They'll be kind of rounded at the end and you don't want that. You want the thickness of the, the log to be as even as possible. Uh, if you have one thick side and one thin side, those two scones will bake differently. One will be underdone and one will be overdone. So thickness is important. So next we're going to brush the log with melted butter and some uh, coarse sanding sugar. If you don't have coarse sanding sugar, you can also use turbinado sugar, raw sugar, anything that's coarse uh, really adds a nice delicious crunch to the top of your scone. So we're just buttering the top. We don't need to butter the sides. We want to make sure that all the edges rise. If the, there's butter on there, it might inhibit some of the, of the rise of the uh, scone. So now we're going to uh, sprinkle our coarse sanding sugar or turbinado, whatever you got, on the top there. Just make sure it's a nice even layer. Now it's time to cut. We're gonna cut these into 12 equal pieces. Uh, best way to do that is to take the middle, which is nine inches, cut there, and then basically just space out every three inches and then cut those on a diagonal. So we're gonna cut this in half. And then each half we're gonna cut into thirds. And then for each piece, we're gonna cut those in a diagonal from one end to the other.
From this point, we're going to put these on a sheet pan. You can either put down parchment or I like to butter the actual sheet pan. What that does is it actually fries the bottom of the scone a little bit more, gives it a really nice uh, crunchy bottom, make sure that it's not underdone or anything like that. So you're gonna wanna put these into a 400 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. You want the tops to be nice and golden brown and you want the sides to be slightly lighter. Uh, this will give the top a nice crunch, but you won't be over baking the scone so they won't be too dry. All right, so our scones are out of the oven and they're ready to eat. I recommend eating them warm out of the oven. It's one of my favorites. Some melted butter, maybe a little bit of jam, some clotted cream, however you like to eat them. They're great cold however you like. The great thing about these scones is that you can switch out some of the ingredients. So as long as you keep true to the measurements, you can sub in raisins or dried apricots. I would recommend dry fruit as opposed to fresh fruit just because it's a little bit easier to control. Um, but hopefully that gives you an idea of what to do for a delicious scone. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know and we'll see you next time. Thank you.